Now, the U.S. is making progress on tackling COVID-19, which wouldn't be possible without our medical workers fighting hard on the front lines. Joining us now to discuss is Dr. Jennifer Ellis, a Los Angeles ER doctor. Doctor, good to speak with you again. Uh, take us through what you're seeing uh, in your hospitals at the moment. Good morning. Um, well, what we're seeing is a, a little bit of a flattening of the curve, a little bit of a slowing down. We're starting to see uh, some patients at the end of the course of the disease, uh, some very serious outcomes. And we're also starting to see some patients coming in again who have other medical problems that were afraid, I think, to come in before. Um, we're seeing a little bit less of people coming in just looking for testing. Um, in the beginning, I think when testing was less available, people were coming to the emergency room looking for just testing when they weren't that ill. Uh, for the most part now, we're seeing mostly people who are very ill. And what about uh, the need for ventilators? Do you have uh, the ventilators that you need right now, doctor? And are fewer people being put on them at this point? Well, at this point, over the weekend, uh, we started to have a little bit of a, a flattening of the curve and a slowing of deaths. We had only 24 deaths here in Los Angeles on Sunday, which is good. Um, but prior to that, in the, in the few days uh, leading up to that, we were having a, a pretty consistent level of people getting on ventilators. Um, I think uh, at the moment we have enough. Uh, there is some anticipation that if there is a second surge, which uh, some folks are anticipating if we open up again, we may be in danger. But right now we have enough. There is also some talk of getting uh, enough dialysis machines um, and other support uh, equipment that we might need is, as a lot of times with COVID, it's not just a question of airway failing or of respiratory collapse, but also of renal failure or liver failure. Um, you know, this disease uh, has been very humbling and it can make people ill uh, very quickly. And uh, I think New York has started to realize that some of the dialysis equipment that they have was not sufficient for the number of patients that were critically ill. So at this point, the ventilator situation is sustainable, but if we get another surge, uh, we could be in danger. You talk about that second wave, which we were hearing more and more medical folks talk about, that if we come back online with the economy too quickly, um, it could be even more devastating. The second wave than the first wave has been as hard as that is to believe. What would your message be to people who are advising President Trump right now as to when to open the economy from, from your perspective there on the ground in L.A.? Well, I, I think the number one thing that is helping and that has been shown to help is social distancing. And I think that I can't emphasize that enough. Uh, we also need widespread testing. I mean, there's been so much talk of testing, but quite frankly, we are still uh, rationing testing in many hospitals around the country. And, you know, on the platforms that I'm speaking with doctors on social media, uh, we're still, for the most part, deciding to use testing for those that are the most critically ill. Now, um, if we can get serology testing, which is the testing that uh, can tell if you've had immunity to the disease. And that's where all of the hope is now uh, for a lot of the medical community. If we can get that level of testing up, if it can be reliable and widespread, if it can be distributed widely, then we can have some level of confidence uh, to know when we can open up again. The, the other things that we need, which are very critically important, is we need to protect special populations. You know, what I saw in the last few days uh, in the emergency room were cases coming in from nursing homes, um, lots of cases coming, clusters coming in from the same nursing homes, uh, not just the patients, but staff who are caring for them. Um, and so if we can't protect these special populations, then this next surge is going to, again, overwhelm potentially some of the healthcare systems. We also need to make sure that healthcare workers have what we need. Uh, the PPE, the protect, personal protective equipment that we need, the pipelines are still very erratic. Um, we can't be sure that we're going to get enough masks, enough coveralls so that we can intubate, so that we can protect ourselves. I mean, these things are critically important. And until we have all of these measures in place, I don't think people are going to feel confident enough, even if, if certain markets are opened up, to go out again and start buying and socializing. And so, um, you know, I can't emphasize enough uh, how much these things have to come in a coordinated fashion, because uh, if you open up one area and if you, for example, open up New York and people start traveling again, they come to places where they haven't been widespread uh, immunity, then we could end up with a, a similar situation to New York here in Los Angeles, for example. Doctor, based on your knowledge of uh, Gilead's remdesivir, do you share some of the optimism regarding this drug? I do, and it's not just based on the the data that's been leaked from the Gilead trials uh, in Chicago, but also from some of the early data in China. Um, and you know, from the beginning, I was telling my husband. It, 
if I get this disease, I want you to push for remdesivir and not for chloroquine because, um, you know, I think that it's it's still very early yet. So you have to be very cautious. You can't say that there there's a slam dunk that this is going to cure. Um, but in terms of the, the limited data that we have, there's definitely uh, an effect there that we're not necessarily seeing from some of the trials for, for chloroquine. So um, I do think that, that, that there is some optimism there. Um, but again, um, I'm hopeful for actual clinical trials where we can see data as opposed to just spec speculation. Doctor, are you seeing more people now being released from the hospital? Are you seeing, you know, some, some light at the end of the tunnel that those who are coming in are not coming in critically hurt and that they're able to leave? I, I'm hearing stories here in, in some New York hospitals that more people are leaving now and they're actually playing George Harrison's Here Comes the Sun every time somebody is released from the hospital as the whole, the whole team cheers that somebody else is, is well enough to leave. What has your experience been? Um, well, unfortunately for me, I'm in the emergency room, so I'm most of the part at the at the part where you first come in, and so there's not a lot of cheering going on in the emergency room. But um, I am hearing from my colleagues that there is some optimism. There are some people leaving. People are getting better, and we have to remember that 80% of the people who get this disease do get better. Um, unfortunately for me, I'm still also seeing people coming in, you know, whose whose wives and whose family members are intubated from the disease, and they're terrified and they're sick as well. Um, I saw one patient who came in. Um, after three weeks after being diagnosed, and that person was critically ill. So um, while there is some optimism, you know, I, I do remain very, very cautious. And, and I think that the people who are getting better are doing so a, a lot of the time because of the critical efforts of healthcare professionals who are putting themselves on the line for this. So um, while I do share the optimism, I am very hopeful that if we uh, do open up again, that we can maintain some of these precautions in place so that we can uh, treat this without, uh, you know, overwhelming our healthcare system. All right, Dr. Jennifer Ellis, Los Angeles uh, emergency room doctor. Appreciate everything you're doing. And of yeah. course, please, please do stay safe. Will do. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.